Isang magandang magandang araw po mga kasambuhay. Ako po si Father Domi Guzman ng Society of St. Paul at sa ngalan po ng mga pari, brothers, seminarista ng aming pong kongregasyon dito po sa Ecclesiastical Province ng Pilipinas at Macau. At gayon din po sa ngalan ng TB Maria at ng mga pari ng Arts Diocese of Manila, kayo po ay aming pong inaanyayahan Nasamahan kami sa pagmimisa, pananalangin, pagninilay sa salita ng Diyos ngayon pong ikadalawamput-apat ng Marso, March 24, 2019. Ito po ang ikatlong linggo sa panahon ng Kwaresma at bisperas po ngayon ng tinatawag po natin na Feast of the Annunciation, March 25. Annunciation, ang uh, pagsisimula ng Birheng Maria ng paglilihi sa mahal na Panginoong Yesus sa pamagitan po ng balita ng Anghel na si Gabriel. So, ibig po sabihin niya na ay, Nako, siyam na buwan na lang, Pasko na naman. Ha? So, anyway, magkwaresma muna tayo bago ho tayo magpasko. And of course, we'd like to pray para po sa ating mga regular na mga kasambuhay, mga may sakit, yun pong mga members ng Morning Glory, mga cancer patients po, ang uh, mga inaapostolate po ng ating pong kapatid na si Charity, no? uh, napaka-gracious po ng ating kapatid na yan sa Workers of Christ. No? Gayun din po, we'd like to pray for all the elderly, at ang inyo pong mga caregivers, ang ating pong mga kapulisan at mga alagad ng batas, yung pong mga travelers, no? Lalo-lalo na po yung mga naglalakbay sa dagat, mga seaman, sea women, no? Alam po natin na napakalakas ang pangungulila kung puro karagatan ang iyong nakikita. And then of course, we'd like to pray also para po sa ating mga kapatid na OFWs, na alam po natin ay linggo-linggo kasambuhay po natin at uh, kasama natin sa atin pong mga pagdinilay. We'd like to pray for the group of Brother Alex Pideris diyan po sa Discovery uh, and po sa Canada. Oh, si Brother Alex Pideris uh, kasama po niya si Dr. Doroteo Federico Uh, si Dorothy at Eric Merck, si Annie Adorna, Emily at Dante Reyes, Jos Joy at Alex Reyes, Dr. Uh, Josephine Adorna Guzman, Alicia Adorna, Mercy and Jose Regino, at Jose Adorna Jr. At ang inyo pong mga pamilya, God bless you po. Ha? Gayun din pong atin pong mga kasambuhay, na nakilala po natin sa Bansang Israel, si Neri Perez, Jenelyn Pasqua, at si Wia Ardes. No? God bless you po sa inyong mga gawain dyan sa Israel. And uh, of course, hindi po natin makakalimutan, ipanalangin din ang atin pong mga mission partners, ang Masigan Family, Chowa Family, Arrojado, Villarus Family, ang Jacob family, ang pamilya po ni Mariel Diaz, ni Irma at Delio San Miguel, ang pamilya po ni Otnia Corazon Ochoa, Rosita Kauyan, at gayon din po, we greet si Catherine Pablos at si Chona. Kumusta na kaya itong mga ito na nakilala po natin dyan po sa SM South Mall, sila po ay nag-a-abroad din. And of course, we'd like to pray for uh, Romel Salvador, Gemma Candela, May Asuncion Recio, Rachel Esteban at Leilani Paladio Himotea at ang atin pong uh, grupo ng uh, Pilgrims to the Holy Land noong pong October 2018, ang Yellow Group, ang atin pong mga pari galing sa Recoletos at uh, gayon din ang ating uh, missionary priest na si Father Joy dyan po sa Taiwan ang uh, grupo po ni Cora Cabral uh, Geraldine Lee La, uh, Grace Lara 
at uh, yes, si Grace at uh, si Jerry, no? Lara. Si Marie Joyce Brillo, Jimmy Olaso, Juana San Benaventura at uh, si Nino Molina at yung iba pa. Ngayon po, tayo naman po ay uh, dadako sa iba pong mga mas intentions na pinadala sa atin sa pamagitan ng atin pong Facebook account. Si Elena Ngo, Healing for Edward Ngo. Gayun din po, intentions po ni Jeanette De La Cruz at Cynthia Dison para naman po kay Mila Milagros da Canay, Healing and Recovery. Si Gina Sopeña Lerum, Healing and Fast Recovery for Bonifacio Salvador and uh, humihingi din po siya ng prayers para po sa kanyang daughter na nagpaplanong magtrabaho sa South Korea. Si Cora Liwanag Madelo, siya nga pala po pinapanalangin natin si Raymond Liwanag ang uh, uh, ang husband po ni Tita Liwanag mga Mater Day e members po sila ME Marriage Encounter Couple itong si Raymond Liwanag ay nasawi po dun sa nangyaring sunog sa Ayala Village bayan diyan sa Mandaluyong no so we'd like to pray for the eternal repose gayon din po si Nelly Tumabang si Edna Hulito Salmingo of course no a uh, birthday para po kay Ami Aranilla Hilario, special uh, prayers naman para sa souls ni Ruby Pabilario at ni Tatay Eduardo at Nanay Nena. Healing para kay Mel Tina Bagtas, Chito Hongko, uh, Lina Flor Salmingo, Hamero Lina Flor, uh, si Cecilia Garcia at Annabel Garovillas. Blessings para po sa family ng ating kaibigang si Sister Edna, si Gary Salmingo, Eg Salmingo, Edward J. Salmingo, Nemia Lacson, Alan Holita Risa, Mejia, Awini, Hereza at ang Holita family. Gayun din po, Holito family. Si Fe Escritor Masaga. Okay, at uh, blessings din po at prayers para kay Cristeta Obedosa at Yola uh, Corvero Peterson at si Gina Mihares, si Gina sa Singapore, no? Si Maria Liu sa atin pong uh, isang Pauline friend diyan sa Malaysia. Mercy and blessings for ODB for Te Artit, for Yong, and for Ho Xie Sing, and especially healing of mind and body for Ho Xiu. No? Si Amalia Caballero, Jocelyn Perez Cabrias, intentions po para sa kanyang brother-in-law na si Nonoy Ibay. Si uh, uh, Angelica Rodriguez Reyes, yan, pinag-pray-pray din po natin ang kanyang parents no? na naging faculty po ng St. Paul Seminary nung araw bago sila mag-migrate. No? Si um, Jocelyn Buwan Cunanan, Rose Lozano, Ani Asis Almasin, uh, Maria Carmelina Ligon Dumlao, Ani Asis at uh, Virginia Buenaobra Lazaro at Nenita Palillo Lu. Yan. No? So, lahat po ng ating mga intentions na yan, we would like to lift up to the Lord uh, and ask the Lord to bless them on this, the third Sunday of Quaresma. Ngayon, kumusta naman po yung ating mga pagbasa? Uh, ano ba ang tema ng mga pagbasa natin on this, the third Sunday of Lent. Ah, apalagay ko po ang common sa ating mga readings for today, for this Sunday, 
as, is that they all call our attention to uh, reflect on the reality of God's deliverance. Pagliligtas ng Diyos. The deliverance of the Lord. At uh, ang atin pong mga kwento ng Biblia na pakikinggan natin sa Liturgy of the Word, first reading, magsisimula po sa Exodus 3, yung pong burning bush experience ni Moses. Kung paanong at the age of 80 years old, habang siya'y nagpapastol doon sa ilang ng uh, Sinai, ay si Moses po tinawag ang kanyang atensyon ng Panginoon sa pamagitan ng burning bush. Isang nagbabaga na punong kahoy na hindi natutupok na hanggang ngayon po dinadayo dyan po sa monasteryo ng St. Catherine dyan sa desert po ng Sinai. At anong sabi po ni God kay Moses? I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cry of complaint. So, kanya, I have come to rescue them. So, alam niyo po, when you speak about the deliverance of God, the deliverance of God is something that we have to pray for. Something we have to ask for in faith and in humility and even in tears. Sabi nga po uh, dito sa atin pong first reading. Di ba? Ganun ang nangyari kay San Agustin. Talagang niluhaan ni Santa Monica ang kanyang panalangin para kay Agustin. I think that is very important. If we are serious about the need of deliverance, halimbawa of this country, we have to really pray for it, beg for it, cry for it. And sabi dito sa atin pong responsorial psalm, the Lord is kind, the Lord is merciful. Ang deliverance po ng Panginoon ay bahagi ng kanyang great mercy. Yan. Sa second reading naman po natin sa 1 Corinthians chapter 10, iprinepresent po sa atin kung paanong ang mga kaganapan sa panahon ni Moses na kung saan sinimulan ng Diyos ang deliverance ng bayang Israel, lahat ng ito ay tinumbasan, ha? dinagdagan pa at pinerfect pa ng Panginoong Yesus. Kung paano sa disyerto, sabi sa second reading, iniligtas sa kamatayan ng Diyos ang mga Israelita sa pamagitan ng tubig na galing sa bato. Sabi po ni Pablo sa second reading natin ngayon sa 1 Corinthians 10, Jesus is the rock. Lahat ng ginawa sa Old Testament, lahat pong yan ay prototype lamang ng deliverance na gagawin mismo ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Kaya napakahalaga po ang krus ni Kristo. Okay? Sa Gospel naman natin, Gospel of Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 9, ay maririnig po natin ang talinhaga ng puno ng igos. Parable of the fig tree. Napakasarap po niyan kapag fresh na fresh yung fruits. Kaya talagang naghahanap yung may-ari ng fruits eh. Yung fruits pala ho ng fig tree, para hong kamatis yan, makinis, fresh ha, makinis yung labas, parang kamatis. Pero pag ninatak mo, parang sinigwelas na walang buto. Isipin mo yan. <laughs> oh? Yung sinigwelas, alisan mo ng buto, lakihan mo tulad ng kamatis, medyo makapalang balat, yun po ang matakam na bunga ng puno ng igos. No wonder, ito pong may-ari ay nagahanap ng bunga. Pero sabi nga dito sa kwento ng Ibanghelyong Ati Maririnig, tatlong taon na pinapasyal-pasyalan ng may-ari yung puno ng igos, walang bunga. Kaya gusto na niyang tigpasin. Sabi niya, sayang lang yan. 
yung lupa dyan, tamnan ng ibang halaman. Pero ano sinabi po nung caretaker, sabi niya, wag muna ho, bigyan natin ng isang taon, didiligin ko, lalagyan ko ng pataba, lahat ng klase ng pataba, ay ilalagay ko dyan, bigyan natin. Mga kapatid, alam niyo po, ang dating sa akin nung gospel na yan, conversation ng dakilang Diyos Ama at ni Jesus na atin pong caretaker. Si Jesus nakikiusap. O, sabi niya, Ama, pagbigyan mo, pagbigyan mo ang puno ng igos na yan. Mga kapatid, ang panahon po ng kwaresma, paggunita sa season of grace, pagbibigay ng Diyos. Pero yon nga, wag naman natin pong maging labis-labis ang atin pong gagawin na pagsasamantala sa grace ng Panginoon. Sana itong season of Lent must be a fruitful season for us na sana ay mayroong mangyari sa pagbibiyay at pagtsatsaga ng Diyos. Nandun din ang pursigin natin na magkaroon ng pagpapanibago, pamumunga ng buhay. Happy Lent! Fruitful Lent sa atin pong lahat. Narito na po ang banal na misa mula po sa Oratory of Mary Queen of Apostles dyan po sa St. Paul Road, San Antonio Village, Makati. Warm greetings to the subscribers of the Sambuhay TV Mass. And we thank all of you for supporting this uh, apostolate of the Society of St. Paul. Kwaresma po na naman. Panahon para tayo ay maghanda para maranasan din natin ang bagong buhay ng Panginoong Heso Kristo na ibinabahagi sa atin sa kanyang muling pagkabuhay. Pero walang shortcut po eh. Bago makarating sa muling pagkabuhay, dumadaan po sa apat na pong araw ng panalangin, pag-aayuno, pagkakawang gawa. Bakit? Para maihanda natin ang ating sarili sa pakikipaglakbay kay Jesus patungo sa kanyang kalbaryo. Kapag may taong nagaanyaya sa atin, mag-shopping, daming sasama yan. Kakain, ang dami rin sasama. Good time, marami sasama. Pero kapag ang pupuntahan ay kalbaryo, baka wala nang sumama kay Jesus. Sa katunayan, iniwan siya ng kanyang mga kaibigan. Kailangang ihanda natin ang ating sarili para sumabay, sumunod kay Jesus. At yan ay mangyayari kung hindi na sarili natin, kundi si Jesus ang tuto. Mangyayari yan sa pamamagitan ng panalangin, hindi sarili ang tuto, kundi ang Diyos. Pagkakawang gawa, hindi sarili, kundi ang kapwa. Pag-aayuno, hindi ang sariling hilig, kundi ang pagtitiwala sa Diyos. Yan ang sinabuhay ni Jesus, ganyan din ang paghahanda natin para siya'y makasama. This is Cardinal Chito Tagle from the Archdiocese of Manila. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in today's gospel of the third Sunday of Lent, we read of national tragedies that occurred in Jesus' time. Like the contemporaries of our Lord, we are probably driven to ask, were the victims more sinful than other people? Did the victims deserve their fate? Jesus categorically refuses to attribute their misfortune to God or to his sense of justice. God does, not, God does only good. He offers only life. If we are to relate sin to any misfortune, it should be to make us realize that we are all sinners in need of conversion. Sin is the greatest misfortune, and so we should turn away from it. We should answer Lent's urgent call for a change of heart. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and led them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who I am. Then he added, this is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus, I am to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crown you with kindness and compassion. The Lord, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure shall take care not to fall. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means, but I tell you, if you do not repent, you will perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who live in Jerusalem? By no means, but I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So habang tayo ay nagpapatuloy sa ating apat na araw na paghahanda ngayong, ngayong panahon ng Kwaresma, nais ko munang batiin yung ating mga kababayan, mga OFWs, mga Overseas Faith Witnesses, lalong-lalo na sa Saudi Arabia, sa Middle East, no? sa Dubai. Marami po tayong mga feedbacks na maraming sumusubaybay sa ating uh, banal na Eucharistia. Sa aking mga kamag-anak, no? si Demi at Jenny, dyan sa Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, 
sa Chicago, no? mga Abbey family sa Canada. Nakalimutan ko yung ibang pangalan ng mga gustong uh, i-greet dito sa ating uh, banal na misa. Pero alam nyo na kung sino kayo. Do continue to spread the word because we already have breached the 50,000 mark. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong 50,000 regular online subscribers na nakatutok sa atin. So, tayo ay uh, nakikiisa sa inyong mga sakripisyo dyan sa ibang bansa. Gayun din, no? sa iyong pakikiisa sa atin dito sa ating banal na pagdiriwang. So, we are now on the third Sunday of Lent. Noong ako'y uh, bagong orden bilang isang uh, pari, isa sa mga ginawa para ako ay mapalalim yung aking karanasan at ministry bilang isang pari ay yung ako ay mag-volunteer bilang isang chaplain na Makati Med. And uh, I got more than I wanted. Dahil doon sa isang ospital, marami kang makakasalamuhang mga instances, mga karanasan ng matters of life and death. Matters of life and death. Bago mamatay, ikaw ay tatawagin. Matapos mamatay, ikaw din ay tatawagin. So, ibig sabihin, nariyan ang lahat ng mga aspeto ng buhay at yung struggles ng isang tao, lalong-lalo na kapag ka nasa binggit ng kamatayan. And for me, in my five years stay at Makati Med, yung pinakamasaklap ay yung makita ko at bendisyonan yung mag-ina doon sa delivery room dahil pareho silang pumanaw, pareho silang namatay. Hindi na kaya na nung nanay na mailuwal yung kanyang uh, sanggol, yung kanyang anak. At gayon na rin, namatay din yung kanyang anak. So habang binibindisyonan ko doon sa stretcher, sa delivery room, na hawak-hawak ng nanay, do wala ng buhay, yung kanyang anak, talagang di ko maiwasang magtanong, no? What have they done to deserve this? Ano ba ang kanilang nagawa para magkaganito ang kanilang sitwasyon? Lalong-lalo na siguro doon sa husband, doon sa asawa. Napakalaking katanungan yon At marahil tanungin niya sa kanyang sarili, ano bang kasalanan na nagawa ko para parusahan kami ng ganito? And we find ourselves many times, hindi lang yon sa ganung klaseng mga sitwasyon, kundi sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay. And that is a basic existential question. Am I being punished? Kapag ka feeling natin minamalas tayo sa buhay, sunod-sunod yung ating mga pagsubok sa buhay, tila yata at ito ang yung ating reklamo sa Panginoon. Lord, ako ba yung pinaparusahan? Bakit ba ako nagkakaganito? Ako na may nagsisikap na napapakabuting tao, pero bakit Eto, minamalas ako sa buhay. Kami ay nasunugan, kami ay nawalan ng trabaho, kami ay uh, tinamaan ng bagyo. So marami mga trahedyang dumarating. At alam niyo ang kasagutan ay matatagpuan natin sa ating Ibanghelyo ngayon. This practical question is being addressed by God no less. When He said, By no means, by no means that he desired that we have to experience all these things. But, ito ang sinabi ng Panginoon. If you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. So, ibig sabihin, yung ating katayuan ay katulad din ng mga namatay. Lahat tayo ay mga makasalanan. Hindi sila ay namatay na una sa atin, hindi dahil they are more deserving of death than any one of us. But we are actually on the same field and situation. Lahat tayo ay makasalanan. Ngayon ang sunod na tanong, bakit ba sa mundong ito, bagamat tayo ay napapakabait, ay tila yata 
mas lalo na tayong pinapahirapan ng tadhana ng buhay. Bakit nga ba nagkakaganito? At yan ang kasagutan ay matatagpuan din natin mula doon sa sulat ni San Juan, sa kanyang Ebanghelyo at sa kanyang mga sulat. Nung sinabi niya, we live in this world but we are not of this world. Dahil minsan, yung mga sinasabi natin kamalasan, yung mga pagsubok, yung mga paghihirap na ating dinarana sa buhay, are also some part of them are part of our undoing. Yung pagiging irresponsible steward natin. Halimbawa, kung tayo ay patuloy na uh, nagtatapo ng basura kung saan-saan, o di kaya kinakalbo natin ang ating uh, kabundukan, o di kaya nagtatapo ng mga dinamita bilang isang pamamaraan na pangingisda sa karagatan, ano sa palagay niyo ang maging resulta? So we have brought it upon ourselves. Some of this could be man-made and others could be what we call natural calamities. Ibig sabihin, hindi yan ginusto ng Diyos. But we live in an imperfect world and sufferings and pain are inescapable realities. Kaya nga, tayo ay mga militant church. Ibig sabihin, militante. Tayo ay patuloy na nakikibaka. And so we belong to the same situation. We are all the same. Tayo lahat ay makasalanan. Nauna yung isang tao, hindi dahil siya ay makasalanan. Kamakailan lang, nung isang buwan ang nagdaan, meron din akong isang requemas, misa, sa patay. Kung saan, ang namatay isang 27-year-old na assumption graduate. Kaya ang nandoon, nung sa gabi na yon ay puro mga kaklase niya sa assumption. At namatay at 27 years old sa sakit na leukemia. At kung makikita mo siya habang siya ay nakahiga doon sa kanyang uh, kabaong, para lang siyang natutulog. No? Napakaganda. Para lang natutulog. Siguro na paghandaan niya ang kanyang sitwasyon. Bakit? Because she had been suffering of leukemia for the past nine years. So na-discover niya na may sakit pala siya noong siya ay third year college. At nakapagtapos pa siya. A third year high school, nakapagtapos pa siya ng kanyang ka- kolehiyo sa UST. Hanggang kahit siya ay patuloy na lumalaban at nakikibaka, talagang bumigay na ang kanyang katawan. And finally, she died at 27 years old. And again, you, would, you cannot help but ask, ano ba ang nagawa ng batang ito? Pero kung tutuusin, kapag ka sinunod natin ang kagustuhan ng Diyos at tayo ay tunay na at mabuting mga alagad ng Diyos, kahit pa man regardless ng ating edad, kung tayo ay nagkaroon ng full life o hindi, I would always say that it is a mission accomplished, that we are now home at last. Because we should not forget that that is where we are going. We only have one point of destination and that is heaven and one point of departure and that is sin. Ayon kay St. Augustine. Kaya nga, yan dapat ang isang trahedya na ating iiwasan, ang kasalanan. Ang kasalanan. So it calls for repentance. That is the first part of our reflection in this third Sunday of Lent. Repentance na magkaroon ng pagbabagong buhay, na magkaroon ng tunay na pagsisisi sa ating mga kasalanan. Dahil lahat tayo, pantay-pantay ang katayuan. Sa harap ng Diyos, we are all deserving of His punishment if there is. Pero ang Diyos ay divest in misericordia, a God who is rich in mercy and compassion. Kaya sinabi niya, I have not come to condemn the world but to save the world. If ever these things come upon us, ay eh dahil na rin siguro sa ating kapabayaan. We have been irresponsible stewards of His creation. At dahil bunga yan ng kasalanan. At yan ang dapat nating iwasan. Pero hindi nagtatapos doon. Sa pagbabagong buhay, doon sa conversion, doon sa ating repentance, sa pagsisisi ng ating kasalanan. Dahil maaaring sabihin natin sa loob ng simbahan, kung magaling yung speaker, halimbawa, sa loob ng simbahan, during the Kyrie, o kahit paman, habang tayo ay nagkaroon ng Lenten Recollection Retreat, mapapaiyak ka, no? gabalde ang iyong mga luha. 
Pero matapos noon, balik din sa dating ugali. Balik din sa dating asal. Hindi yon ang naisipahiwatan ng Diyos. Our repentance, our contrition of our sins should lead us to be productive sa buhay. To be fruitful. And that is the second part of our gospel reading today concerning the fig tree. We need to be fruitful. Sabi nga ni uh, Bishop Ted Bakani, sabi niya ang buhay ay hindi mabongga o di kaya hindi ito pabunggahan. Ang buhay ay dapat mabunga. That in the end, when we present ourselves before the Lord at the end times, we bring with us our gifts. Our gifts of what? Good works. Our gifts of love and compassion to others because God in the first place has loved us without measure, without reservation. Yun nga ang magiging sitwasyon pagharap natin sa Panginoon sa kanyang paglilitis kasi yan ang kanyang warning para sa atin. There will be a moment of final reckoning. If you are cut down, it means it is the end of all your chances because we are mortal beings. Kung gugustuhin ng Diyos, He desires that all of us should enter heaven. Pero dahil tayo mga mortal beings, haharap tayo sa kanyang paglilitis. And in that moment, there will be what we call a performance evaluation. Performance evaluation. Not in what we have accumulated, not according to our wealth, not according to our prestige and power that we have gained in this life, but according to the good works the love that we have spread and shared with others in this life. We will now stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The season of Lent is an urgent call to repent and reunite ourselves to God. Let us humbly pray to the Father that He may help us bear the good fruits of conversion and renewal. We shall say, God our strength, hear our prayer. God our strength, hear our prayer. That the Church may always work for reforms within herself, aware that she is a community of people, always in need of repentance, we pray. God of strength, God of strength hear our prayer that those who hold public office and those who aspire to serve our country strike down the unhealthy and oppressive structures that weaken the faith of people, we pray. God of strength, hear our prayer. That instead of looking upon the miseries of others as punishment of God, we may open our hearts and hands to them, ready to share with them what we have, we pray. God of strength, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may steer us to bear fruits of repentance, justice, and love, which the Lord expects from us, we pray. God, our strength, strength hear our prayer. That those stricken with debilitating illnesses, victims of natural calamities, violence, and injustice, may trust in God's providential care, we pray. God, of strength, hear our prayer. Father, we beg you to hear our supplications. May these prayers strengthen us to be faithful in our Lenten observance of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to Let the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from their disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Luis Antonio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God 
Father, Abba, or Itay. And so we have the courage to say, us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Jesus our Savior, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot receive communion, join us in praying the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Prayer of Overseas Workers Saint Michael the Archangel, I am about to leave my family and the physical and emotional distance affect me. The physical distance means I will be living 
in a totally different culture where everything will be new. The emotional distance implies that no longer will I be able to embrace my loved ones when I want to. You have done special mission for God and you did it confidently, trusting that everything will be all right because our Creator has everything in His hands. Share with me the same faith. Make this travel a part of my mission here on earth. I have to leave for the good of my family and loved ones. I have to leave to do God's will. While I am away from them, protect them from dangers. Let them feel my presence through my letters and calls. Make us a strong family, even though we are far from one another. Saint Michael, through your intercession, may Jesus be the light of the family and Mary be our mother too. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the plans of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, that hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go glorifying God in our lives. Thanks be to God. Maraming salamat sa ating pong paring tagapagdiwang ngayon pong ikatlong linggo ng Kwaresma at ngayon naman po ay tutuloy tayo sa ating pong uh, katikismo mula po sa Gaudete et Exultate ni Pope Francis nasa chapter 5 na po tayo ang huling chapter neto pong uh, sulat ni Pope Francis about the call to holiness 
today. At dito tinatalakay po ni Pope Francis sa chapter na ito, yung realidad na ang holiness ay isa pong spiritual combat. Narinig po natin nung nakaraang lesson natin na kailangan ng pagiging alerto. Dito naman po sa atin pong lesson ngayon, pag-usapan natin anong klaseng spiritual combat ang hinaharap po natin, yung pinakamatindi, kapag tayo po we are really trying to follow the way of holiness. Ang sabi po ni Pope Francis sa paragraph 164 ng Gaudete et Exultate, meron po yung tinatawag na spiritual corruption. Wow! Spiritual corruption. Take note. Ha? Ano ba yung spiritual corruption? Sa paragraph 165, Uh, ng kanya pong sulat, sabi po ni Pope Francis, spiritual corruption is worse than sin. Mas matindi pa sa anong klaseng kasalanan. Kasi ang spiritual corruption pala, sinisira neto yung ating pananaw, yung ating spiritual sight. So much so that sa pananaw po natin, kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng spiritual corruption, nakokorap yung ating files nakokorap yung atin pong software, everything appears acceptable. Oh, wala na, wala nang format. Ha? Nasira ang format. Everything appears acceptable. Deception, slander, egoism, self-centeredness, everything is acceptable. Depende. Ayun ah, po yung sinasabi ni Pope Benedict na relativism. Relativism. Spiritual corruption. Kasi sabi nga sa 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14, Satan can disguise himself as an angel of the light. Pwede pong mamayagpag at pwede pong magkubli si taning na parabang anghel ng kaliwanagan. Sa, sa gitna po niyan kung ganon, Starting in paragraph 166, sabi po ni Pope Francis, aside from vigilance, aside from uh, yung pagiging alerto natin, mahalaga po sa spiritual combat yung tinatawag na discernment. Okay? Discernment. Na kung saan, more than intelligence, more than common sense, the Holy Spirit gives us the gift Developed in prayer, developed in reflection, the gift to know how to distinguish the world of good and the world of evil. Yan po yung discernment. Okay? Pero tignan nyo ha, wala pong discernment kung walang prayer. Wala pong discernment kung walang reflection. Wala pong discernment kung walang readings, pag-aaral. Wala pong discernment kung walang holiness. No? So, ang kailangan po natin ay itong discernment na ito. Sapagkat lalo-lalo na po, sabi nga, sa mga kabataan daw ngayon, they are all immersed in a culture of zapping. Zapping. Z-A-P-P-I-N-G. Zapping. Ano ba yung zapping? The culture of sapping, para bang two or three more screens interact at the same time, tatlo, apat, limang realidad. O, yung mga kabataan, ganyan po pag magbukas ng computer, ilan yung desktop na nakabukas, no? ilan yung websites na nakabukas, ilan yung app na nakabukas. No? Tinitignan nila yun sabay-sabay. Yung po yung zapping na tinatawag. That is very distracting. Gayun din po, there can also be novelty. No? Yung mga kabago, bago, maraming bagong bagay. Eh, no? Yun lang po mga apps sa uh, cellphones natin. Eh, talagang every, every week yata, eh, nagkakaroon ng upgrade, nagkakaroon ng uh, update. No? Diba? Kailangan mong i-update. No? Kailangan naman sumabay ka. Pero mahalaga sa gitna ng lahat ng yan, sabi po ni Pope Francis, 1 Thessalonians 5.21 Test everything, hold fast to what is good. 
Yan, no? So, hindi naman pinagbabawal ang bago. Hindi naman pinagbabawal yung mga changes na nagaganap sa teknolohiya ngayon. Yung iba ayaw mag-cellphone. Yung iba ayaw mag... Yung sabi niya, ay, magulo yan. Pero alam niyo po, hindi mo na pwedeng ibalik ang buhay sa 19 kopong-kopong. <laughs> Kailangan, kung talagang ikaw ay spiritual, mabubuhay ka sa panahon ngayon sa gitna ng gadget, sa gitna ng traffic, sa gitna ng technology. Ganyan po. No? Pag hindi, para tayong si Orihen. Alam niyo ba si Orihen? Si Orihen po isang napakabanal na tao, pero sapagkat ayaw niya magkaroon ng pagsubok ng kanyang sekswalidad, nagpaka-straight. So, hindi pwedeng gawing santo. Ha? Kasi ang santo na bubuhay sa kabanalan ayon sa challenge ng kanyang panahon. Isipin po natin yan. So, you don't eliminate technology. You don't eliminate the cell phones. Nakakatulong yan. Yan ang kultura ngayon. Yan ang buhay ngayon. Ang importante, eto nga, 1 Thessalonians 5.21 1 Thessalonians 5.21 Test everything, hold on to what is good. Yan. At upang tayo po ay magkaroon ng spirit of discernment, sabi din po ni Pope Francis, kailangan sa mga simple at araw-araw na realidad ng buhay, meron tayong examination of conscience. At the end of the day, kailangan tignan natin yung maghapon. At the end of the day, examinin natin how am I doing, how have I been doing the rest of the day. Di po ba? O, tutuloy po natin yan, mga huling bahagi po ng Gaudete et Exultate ni Pope Francis. Ngayon naman po, nais kong anyayahan kayong lahat na maging Sambuhay TV Mass Mission Partner. Sa panong paraan, nasa screen po natin ang atin pong account numbers para po sa BPI, sa Metrobank, sa CDO. So, share your blessings po. Alam nyo man po, ano, uh, marami tayong kailangan gamitin sa bagong technology. nag upgrade din po ang Sambuhay. nag upgrade din po ang St. Paul Audiovisuals. Maraming salamat po doon sa mga sumusuporta sa apostoladong ito sa pamagitan po ng inyong love offerings. And uh, nasa screen po natin ang ating pong mga account numbers. Pangalawa po, uh, you can be a mission partner by corresponding with us yung inyo pong mga sharings at mga mass intentions. Nasa screen po natin ang ating dedicated text number. And then you can also be a mission partner po sa pamagitan naman po ng uh, tinatawag po natin na pagpapalaganap ng apostolado, propagation. No? Kaya nasa, nasa screen naman po natin, lahat po ng detalyes ng ating mga social media platforms, gamit po natin sa netcasting ng ating pong Sambuhay TV. Ipakita po ninyo ito, ishare po ninyo ito sa mga kaibigan para lumawak pa po ang ating apostolado. Nasa screen din po ang mga cable networks na gamit ng TV Maria. Sa ngalan po ni Father Resti de la Peña, lahat po ng bumubuo ng St. Paul Audiovisuals at ng Sambuhay TV, iniiwan po namin sa inyo ang panalangin ni Blessed James Alberione to spend the week well. My dear and sweet Mother Mary, keep your holy hand upon me Guard my mind, my heart, my senses, that I may never commit sin. Bless my thoughts, affections, words and actions, that I may please you, Jesus. Jesus and Mary, give me your most holy blessings. Amen.